By the way, the name for this now is sulfate. A deprotonated sulfuric acid is sulfate. That comes up a lot in OCHEM. Okay. It's important to know that even though the sulfate oxygen has a negative charge, sulfates are not nucleophilic. We just need to memorize this. We need to memorize that sulfates are not nucleophiles. They don't join substrates. You would normally think something with a negative charge on an oxygen would be a good nucleophile, but that's not the case here because this negative charge is very stabilized through resonance. There's another resonance form where the negative charge is on this oxygen, and there's another resonance form where the negative charge is on this oxygen. Because this is a much more stable negative charge than we usually have on an oxygen, the sulfate is not nearly as reactive as you might have thought. That's the reason why sulfuric acid is a strong acid. Sulfuric acid is a strong acid because sulfate is very stable. Sulfuric acid doesn't mind losing the proton, so we're not going to use this as a nucleophile ever. Then, but that's different from sulfate ion and so forth, and so forth two minus, right? Ah, so I guess, I guess I guess I should have said this is hydrogen sulfate. That's right. I admit I, uh, I gave the wrong name. Technically, this is hydrogen sulfate, not a full sulfate ion, because that would have a negative two charge. So I should have said that hydrogen sulfate is not nucleophilic. This also might sometimes be called bisulfate. Anyway, the key point is that this structure is not nucleophilic. So what's going to happen now? Well, do we have any electrophilic atoms around? Who's our electrophilic atom? The neutral oxygen in water. Is that an electrophile or a nucleophile? Sorry, nucleophile. Nucleophile. This would be a nucleophile. We said it's not a great nucleophile, but now that we've activated the ring, it'll be a good enough nucleophile. Does that mean that this water should be at a head or a tail? That would be at, uh, at the tail. Nucleophiles are at tails. We have to figure out who to put at the head. Who's the electrophilic atom that we're going to put at the head of that arrow? This is the electrophilic atom that we'll put at the head. The carbon? OK, that's a good answer. Now, a lot of people would say that it should be this oxygen. A lot of people would say this oxygen would be the electrophile, but we discussed yesterday why that's not the case. We saw that sometimes a positive charge makes an atom into an electrophile, but actually sometimes it makes the adjacent atom into the electrophile. We saw that, if a atom with, we saw that when the atom with the positive charge already has a complete octet, it just becomes the leaving group, and the atom it's attached to becomes the electrophile. So that idea that we talked about yesterday actually comes up all the time in OCAM. Here it is coming up again. So both of you were correct when you said the electrophile would be this carbon, not this oxygen up here, even though a lot of people would say the oxygen. <coughs> because the oxygen already has a complete octet, it's the atom it's attached to that becomes the electrophile. The other way to put it is, remember we saw the only thing that you're likely to see with a positive charge in an incomplete octet is a carbocation. So a positive charge would make a carbocation into an electrophile, but a positive charge makes pretty much anything else just into a good leaving group, and it makes the thing it's attached to into an electrophile. So here's the carbon that would be the electrophile. But what does the, what, what did the positive charge do for this oxygen? It made it into a better leaving group. After all, there's no way the water can attack this carbon unless the carbon also breaks a bond, because this carbon also has a complete octet. So we need to break this bond over here. A lot of people don't feel comfortable thinking of the oxygen as a leaving group here, since it's, after all, it's still connected to the molecule through the back door. But it is a leaving group in the sense that it's leaving this alpha carbon. If we treat this like the alpha carbon, we are breaking this bond. So this is being treated like a leaving group, even though it's still in the molecule through the back path. Now, this is a reaction that wouldn't have happened over here, because this was not reactive enough without the positive charge. Water is not a good enough nucleophile to attack this when this is a neutral molecule. The whole purpose of the protonation was to make this more reactive. And now the water is good enough to attack. Now that we put in the arrows again, we should be able to draw the product from this next step. So let's draw the product from our next step.
remember to use numbers to make it easier to draw the right product. Let's put in some numbers to make it easier to draw the right product. On the intermediate? Or right. Both? Well, you can start with the starting material if you like, but we've already dealt with this, so we can put it on the intermediate. For example, we could call this the number one carbon uh -huh. and this the number two carbon. I'm confused by the bond we have here. So you're having some trouble drawing the product? Yep. Let's go through that. Now remember that eventually, any time we have the arrows, it should, we should be able to get to the point where it's easy to draw the product. The arrows tell us what to do. If we're getting confused, it's because we're not obeying the arrows and we're just trying to draw what feels good or what looks similar to what we've seen in the past. If we really obey the arrows, we should always be able to get the right product. Well, and the other technique that I should have emphasized yesterday was the one atom at a time technique. So I'm going to start with this oxygen. Let's list everything this oxygen is attached to. What is that oxygen attached to? Two, uh, two hydrogen and uh, carbon number one. This is the one atom at a time technique. I'm just listing what this one atom is attached to. Now let's list everything that the number one atom is attached to. It's attached to the number two atom. Anything else? Is it attached to this oxygen? No, because we have to obey this arrow. This arrow tells us to break this bond. So the number one is no longer attached to that oxygen. Okay. Well, let's continue with the one atom at a time technique. Let's list everything that the number two is attached to. To uh, the oxygen. Good. Well, we'll just go one atom at a time. There's nothing else that the number two is attached to. Question. Yeah. When the water affects the off carbon, doesn't the Oxygen get any, any charge on it? Yeah, you're absolutely right. In, in this case, I was focusing on the bonds, and I was going to go back and put the charges in later. Okay. But if the charge is already obvious to you, you can already put that in. Okay. The, it was the bonds that were giving us trouble here, so I'm going to do that first. But you're right that we have to go back and put in the charges. By the way, when I'm saying everybody that each atom is attached to, we're leaving out the hidden hydrogens. That's standard. We're listing right. everyone but the hidden hydrogens. Now, who is this oxygen attached to? Uh, well, except for this hydrogen. That, is not, that can't be a hidden hydrogen, that has to be drawn. Only the hydrogens on carbons. So we really have to literally ask one atom at a time, who everyone's attached to. Now I think that you said that the bond that was giving you trouble was this one. Well, I can see how that can give you uh, trouble at the beginning, but it's important to notice that eventually we should get to the point where no bond gives us trouble once we're given the arrows. The arrows tell us exactly what to do. There really is no trouble here. There's no arrow from this bond, so we're not breaking the bond. We still draw this bond in. And again, the way that people tend to get into trouble here is that they're not really using the arrows and they're just trying to draw what feels good or what seems similar to what they've seen in the past. Instead, we should just draw exactly what the arrows tell us to draw. And if we really go one atom at a time and use some numbers, we should always be able to draw the product once we have the arrows, no matter how unfamiliar things look. As I was saying, people get confused by the idea that this is a leaving group. Well, it's a leaving group in the sense that it's broken its bond with the alpha carbon, but it is still connected to the alpha carbon through the back door, like this. Now we need to go back and put in the charges. Well, this oxygen was at the initial tail. It started neutral, and it's losing electrons, so it becomes positive. Mm -hmm. And this oxygen was at the final head. It's gaining electrons, but it started positive, so it ends up neutral. Much more important than this particular reaction, again, is to get to the point where we're confident, where we can say to ourselves, if I'm given the arrows, I can always draw the right product. If you simply obey the arrows, we can always draw the right product, no matter how unfamiliar the situation seems. <clears throat> well, we're still not done because we've got a positive charge here and nature doesn't like charges. If there's any way to get rid of this charge, nature would like to get rid of this charge. Well, we have to ask if there's anybody around, how can we get rid of a charge, how can we get rid of a positive charge by losing a proton? The way we get rid of a positive charge is by losing a proton because the proton has a positive charge. Is there anybody around who can take that proton? Well, now we can use this sulfate. We can't use sulfate as a nucleophile but you can use it as a base on somebody who really wants to lose a proton. This is not a very good base, but this is a very strong acid because it has a positive charge. So for this strong acid, we can use this sulfate. It's not a good base, you said? No, it's a pretty poor base. So it's not gonna, it wouldn't deprotonate, say, water, because water is neutral. But it can deprotonate somebody who's already positive. That's why you were right that it was important to notice 
the charge here. This is our standard way of showing in deprotonation, how the oxygen here is taking this proton, and that's going to get rid of our charge. So now let's draw the products from that step. 